Burris Skinner is among the all-time most famous psychologists, and one of his most famous findings was the effect of intermittent reinforcement schedules. This is in every Psych 101 textbook for the last half century. He found that positive and negative reinforcements produced complex effects which interact with personality. The term negative reinforcement refers not to punishment but rather to withdrawal of reward. Further, the schedule of reinforcement is critical. Skinner showed that intermittent reinforcement, such as gambling, caused more persistence in behavior. We read every day about people with gambling addictions. They win every once in a while and that keeps them hooked. So minor changes in a game's probabilities could have a dramatic effect on its motivating properties. We know that extroverts and introverts respond differently to rewards, withdrawals, and punishments. Games have complex reinforcement schedules and elements that may appeal to different personalities on the basis of such properties, independent of the content of the game. For example, extroverts may enjoy a game with risk and chance, while introverts might prefer a more linear relationship with ability. Introverts are more punishment sensitive, while extroverts respond to the reward aspect and are more impervious to punishment. To further complicate things, for example, a review of studies from the 70s by Klusterman showed that males and females often had opposite attributions. Females tended to attribute their success to an easy task or good luck, external factors, and failure to their own lack of ability or effort, internal factors. Males had the opposite pattern, taking personal credit for their success and blaming failures on external influences. As if Skinner and Isink hadn't complicated things enough, social psychologists in the 60s threw a spanner in the works that has barely been recognized in the 50 years since. Balance and cognitive dissonance became buzz research in the 60s. Here's a classic example. Two different U.S. Army Reserve officers induced troops to eat grasshoppers as a survival exercise. One was a well-liked and respected peer, one of the guys, and the other was a cool, aloof, tough guy. He offered them a 50 cent payment as an inducement. The group induced by the nice guy peer ate more grasshoppers. The finding that attracted attention was that the group induced by the tough, aloof guy rated the taste of the grasshoppers more highly. Social psychologists have interpreted this as an example of persons seeking to preserve a cognitive balance. Those who felt they did it for a peer could admit disliking the action. Those that did it for someone unrespected and for a pittance at that needed to find some rationale to explain the dissonance between their lack of incentive and their actions. Hence they rated the taste of the grasshoppers higher. This has tremendous implications for education. For example, suppose we had one group taught a maths lesson by a fashionable game on the latest to die for hand device versus the same drill in a drab text format on a more cumbersome, insultingly ancient hand-me-down desktop computer. The grasshopper effect would lead us to predict that if the upmarket technology produced better outcomes, the deprived control group of students would balance the dissonance by rating the maths lesson as intrinsically more interesting. From a long-term pedagogical perspective, we might rather generate an intrinsic interest in maths versus passive participation. But would we allow such a finding to lead to a recommendation to encourage boring teachers with dilapidated equipment? This is not a silly suggestion, as there are perennial calls for back to basics in education. Countless American school children learned how Abraham Lincoln walked miles over frozen creeks to a log cabin schoolhouse with no floor, one greased paper window, and split log benches instead of desks. Then after doing evening chores he would sit by the firelight, copy text with charcoal onto a board, and read in bed by the light of a tallow candle. The moral of the tale is similar to the grasshopper effect. Because he had to earn it, he appreciated the intrinsic value of the education so much more. Cognitive dissonance is consistent with a lot of research findings such as peer mentoring with students helping each other. Children are not great teachers. They have limited tolerance and attention spans and little empathy. 
Yet despite this, they get consistently positive outcomes with their students and the optimum results are obtained when the mentors have received little or no training for their teaching role. This has the familiar ring of cognitive dissonance. Perhaps some students compensate for their mentor's deficiency and take an interest in the subject. For homework, look up a review on cognitive dissonance. Maybe we can make a puzzle or gamelet based on the names of the researchers and related theories.